Alrighty, we're going to give this a shot. This is a how-to, and this is about making yarn. And this is just the first part, actually uh, a couple of parts into the first part. But a number of years ago, I had an Alaskan Malamute um, who had passed away. And I happened to have a bag of her fur from when we had been... Um, giving her a trim and it was a big bag of fur malamutes are very very furry puppies and i came across the idea of knitting a sweater for one of our other dogs who had grown up with her who is a smooth haired dog um, with all of her fluffy fur and i thought about sending off her fur to be taken care of and then i read into the process and decided that this was something that i could probably do on my own so what you see here is about half actually about a third left of the bag that I have washed um, in my bathtub multiple multiple times and dried thoroughly and I'm going to card it and what that means is I am going to take all of the tangled bits and make them smooth bits and this is actually what happens when I've carded it it's nice and soft and fluffy and that also means that, oops, that when I'm ready to twist it for yarn, I'll be able to make twists of yarn with the fur. I hope, because I'm just learning. So you're going to come on my adventure with me. The one part of this that I did know before I started was about carding, and that's because I had carded some wool from sheep when I was in 4-H, when I was a much younger person. Um, and so since I remembered that piece, I decided that all of the individual pieces of this project were not terribly hard, just something I had never done before. So let's show you about carding. So we have all of these bits and pieces of fur, and I have a bigger wad here. Doesn't necessarily make it good, bad, or indifferent which piece you pick, you're going to apply it to this comb that's got these little teeth. Let's see if you can hear those with a handle. And I have two of these. There are much fancier tools to do this with. This is what I decided I wanted to do since this was the level that I had had experience with. And this was the only part of the process I had any experience with. So this is actually kind of a tangle see if I can find an end that's going to be a little softer. Oh, uh, with Malamutes, there's an undercoat and an overcoat. So these darker pieces are actually quite wiry. Um, because I'm making yarn for a project for another dog, I'm not as concerned about those wiry pieces being itchy as I would for if I were trying to make a sweater for a person. Um, personally, I am terrible with itchy things, so, um, and I'm actually a little bit allergic to dogs as well. So this is a true labor of love. Alrighty. So I have loaded my brush with some various bits. And I have my other brush, which is largely empty. And I am going to put the two together in opposite directions and comb. And you can see that all of the pieces of um, fur are starting to align and go all in the same direction. I'm pulling out tangles. I'm going to lightly pull it off and kind of switch directions with it to get another pass at getting some of the tangles out. And I may not even be doing this even approximatingly correctly. This is just what I learned to do with sheep wool way, way back in the dark ages of my youth. Probably about 1983, 82, somewhere in that time frame. When it starts to roll like that, I want to 
kind of pull it apart and try again because that's actually tangling it more. Oops. So I'm trying to pull it apart to get looser rather than tighter rolls. this one comes clean and this one's full, I can pull up and kind of feel for lumpety bits and then toss it in my bag. So this is the bag of the soft stuff that I have already done. And you can see we have a good amount. And I'm going to start learning to spin soon. So. We'll see if I can do another video when I figure that out and see if I can fail to fail. Um, in any case, uh, check in on me periodically. We'll see where we are on this project. Talk to you later.